My name is Carlos Bravo. I'm a Cloud Alliances Director at Canonical. Um, my job is to uh, extend uh, everything that is integration between our products, which mean Ubuntu, and the different services on AWS. All right. So also, it includes um, improving uh, user experience. So any feedback is welcome. Pass by to, to our booth. Um, so let me tell you about uh, a little bit about Canonical. Because we have a lot of people that pass by to our booth saying, hey, what is Canonical? Um, is this a different Ubuntu distribution? And the funny question is, no, this is the official Ubuntu distribution. What Canon Canonical does is to coordinate with thousands of developers all over the world, package everything, uh, test everything, and um, making available for everyone on different ways, different mechanisms. Okay, so every time that you get you get an ISO for, for your computer or you launch an EC2 instance on AWS, you are using our products. Um, and why do we do that? Because you know that Ubuntu is for free, right? Um, because at Canonical, we really, really love open source. We believe that open source is the base for innovation and inclusion, right? Because it, it allows everyone to um, stand on giant shoulder and build on top of that, you know? So um, it creates um, inclusion, as I mentioned, and enable to create innovation all over the world, right? So everyone can uh, reuse and, and, and start building applications on top of that. And Ubuntu has been one of the main ways that we can give you that experience, that we can deliver you access to open source software. Um, as you see here, um, on 2004, we released the first um, version of Ubuntu, which was not like how we see it today, but um, it was one, I mean, our way to let people to access to technology, to, um, to access to internet, for example, everywhere without any fee, all right? And we extended these benefits to the server world on 2005. Um, and a lot of things happened uh, after that time, but on 2012, um, we officially became partners with AWS. And that was a, a big milestone because we started to co-engineer Ubuntu for running even better on AWS, optimized kernels, cloud init for integration with, with, with the, the init process. Um, so um, there is a lot of effort behind that. And we have become today um, available on all the major public clouds. We are the desktop uh, choice for developers for machine learning, for uh, IoT and robotics, for example, we have Ubuntu Core also there. Uh, we are present on Telco, um, and also we're publishing LTS containers. I don't know if you are aware about that, but, but we also package containers for you, and they follow the same strict standards as Ubuntu. Um, so, but having access to open source software uh, comes with a lot of challenges because it's not enough. If you are building professional applications, if you are, you are a company that really cares about security, nobody wants to get hacked, in, in other words. Um, you need to be careful, you know? It's not just getting open source software. Um, according to Synaps Synopsis, in a um, security risk analysis that they did on 2020, um, out of all the code they analyzed, 99% of the code contained open source software, which is good. We like that, right? But the bad news is that 75% of those code bases contain risk vulnerabilities, security vulnerabilities, right? And the reasons were, I mean, if you, you, you check the, the, the study, it's very interesting. The reason there is and were because um, people don't often update those uh, packages. You know, once you, you pull some packages, you build your application, you build it on the, on the cloud or, or any other service, and then you're good to go. And, and, and no, that. That's the, the, the answer. And on the container world, it is even worse. Um, this is a, an analysis done by Unit uh, 42 from Palo Alto Network, uh, the next talk that is happening here. Happening here. Um, on containers, the situation is even more complex because, as you know, containers are based on several layers. Then you put your software on top, packages, and so on. Uh, but once you deploy a container, it becomes an immutable asset. You don't log in into the container. Um, to just pull an update. You know, that's a bad practice. You need to rebuild everything. So you need to have pipelines. You need to be monitoring all, all the software that go, comes inside. 
So that comes to the second point about, I mean, the second challenge about managing open source software is about maintenance. And maintenance is a two ways road, right? One side is from the, the vendor, how the vendor is supporting your application, and the other is how you are maintaining your application. So this is another, another chart that has come from Snake, also somewhere here. Um, and they, they, they did a snapshot on 2021 of official Docker Hub container images, All right? So Node, Progress, Nginx, Nginx. And once you deploy one of these containers, you will already running with security vulnerabilities, right? So what I'm showing this is because every time that you are, you are even pulling software from a reputable source, you need also to run your updates and, and do your due diligence and check um, for vulnerabilities. Um, and if you are comparing applications on uh, published containers, container images, um, you can see that, that canonical container images, which I mean, we are also um, providing Postgres, Nginx, uh, Apache, and so on. Um, we are replicating the same mechanism that we use for Ubuntu to keep it up to date, right? So you can see that once you, you grab a container image from canonical, um, you have less work to do because they are already updated. But that brings, brings us to these questions um, regarding, regarding your, your, your source, your vendor of open source software. I mean, you need to, to, to realize how fast are they delivering uh, patches. Because every time, every time, every day, there are new vulnerabilities that affect some components of the, of the software. So you need to check, for example, um, how fast these fixes get available to the source. It's not, how, uh, it's not only how fast they fix it, but also the availability for you. Um, also, how long the, the vendor is, is supporting your application. Because also, for example, you can, you can be using today Nginx, but that version could go potentially end of life, and you don't know when, or you should know when. Um, so that comes also with, are the release cycles known and committed by the, by the vendor? Sometimes you don't know when a new version is going to come, so you cannot plan accordingly to that. Um, and also extended support. Not every time you can be monitoring and planning how to rebuild your application because a new version is coming. Sometimes you just need to buy some time, literally. And, and from your side, on, on the side of, of the maintenance that you have to do, is how are you keeping track of updates? Do you have a single source where you can see CVEs and versions, upgrades, for example? How, how are you applying them? Um, sometimes I still see clients that they don't have, um, I see cl customers that they no, don't have automate, um, automation pipelines for building their containers. And sometimes you, you re really need to be building containers as a daily basis. Um, and how are you planning major version upgrades, like the example that I, that I mentioned for Nginx? Um, and finally, if you are looking for a vendor for getting your open source packages, you need to be sure that if something happens, you have someone to call or to file a ticket in, in, a, in a system, for example. Because uh, um, if you can go directly to the source of the developers that are maintaining a package. But in the end, if they cannot provide you that support with an SLA, that could be tricky. Then the third part of, of, of managing open source is about leveraging on, on best uh, practices and, cert and, and certifications and compliance in general. You may be or may not be in an industry regulated where you need FIPS or FedRAM compliance as a, as a total HIPAA PCI ISO. But for example, as we saw in yesterday, uh, yesterday's keynote, um, following FedRAM, even if you are not, um, you're, even if it's not needed in your industry, if you follow FedRAM, you are following already good practices for keeping everything uh, safe. Um, so the, the rule of thumb is follow good practices, follow CIS, um, the cent center of internet security, for example, uh, good practices for hardening your servers, uh, and also find, find providers that will help you to get open source compliant with that, right? which is not that easy. So what Canonical has for this? Um, we have Ubuntu Pro. So Ubuntu Pro is like an umbrella term. It's like an upgrade to the regular Ubuntu that you already know. Ubuntu Pro comes as a solution for all of these um, problems, you know. So you may already be familiar with uh, the Ubuntu LTS uh, release cycle. 
Every two years, we release a new LTS version. LTS is the long-term supported version. So, it's for, uh, so we are ensuring you that at least for five years, you are going to get all the security patches for all the packages that, that are related with the operating system. OK? But the interesting thing is that Ubuntu Pro extends that support from five years up to 10 years of support. So you really don't need to plan cycles so short, short shortly. And also, the good news is that we're extending the support up to uh, more, almost 30,000 packages, you know, because we are including the universe also. And what do I mean about the universe? It's not really the universe, but it's our third-party open source repository. So everything that is on the, uh, available on Ubuntu for, for you for install is, is security supported by us. And I'm talking about these applications. Right, so if you grab an Nginx um, version from our repositories on Ubuntu Pro, you, we, I mean, we are ensuring you that you're getting for 10 years, you're getting security patches for that. Right, so it's like a relief if you are getting open source software. Same with Python runtimes, if you're running Go, Java, PHP, or Node.js, for example, which is, is trickier. So this is a strong and bold commitment from our part, but but we really need that this is the way, way forward for, for letting people to really use open source in, in professional environments. And regarding us and our relationship with AWS, as I mentioned before, we have been already, I mean, we have a relationship for more than 10 years. We co-engineer every, every kernel when, whenever there is a new version on, um, or new feature on AWS. We're available in every instance type or almost every instance type for the day, day one. We, we validate them with, with, with AWS. And we're available as a native product on EC2 and also on EKS. So you can run your Kubernetes also on top of EKS. So if you need, for example, FIPS on EKS, uh, you can run worker nodes, Ubuntu worker nodes on FIPS mode, and then deploy a FIPS container and so on. We are Graviton support, uh, certified. We're a launch partner of Graviton. Um, and we also have our LTS container images on, on ECR. OK, so you can see that our footprint is always growing. I hope that for the next year, we will have more icons here. Um, and Ubuntu Pro is on the marketplace. So if you, if you need to, to, to test it, it's a pay-as-you-go offer. So you just launch it, test it, play with it, and then you, you can even stop it, and you stop paying. So wrapping up about managing open source software, one important thing is taking care of provenance, where your packages are, from vendor's perspective and also from the, the repositories, okay? because you don't need your pack packages to be tampered, for example. Um, also, it's about support and maintenance. How, how are the support models for, for the vendors in, in, in the packages, um, release cycles, and so on? Then you need to have good tools for monitoring CVs, monitoring security updates. Amazon has uh, two tools that are very good for that. Uh, one is, is uh, AWS Inspector. The other is SSM Patch Manager, who will scan your machine, tell you um, packages that are outdated, and it will help you to update them at scale. Um, and also leverage on good practices and, and compliance always. This is a, a very good practice. Get, get a certification like CIS, uh, hardening. Um, with those rules and, and so on. Um, and that's it. If you have any question, you can raise your hand or pass by to our booth and, and talk with us. We are at the opposite side of the, the, of the hall.